mailbag 59-ish. It's going to be a bunch of odds and ends uh, from AliExpress and also from Amazon. Some of them have already been opened. Or, well, one of them has. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to empty the contents out, uh, make it a bit quicker. So let's start with the one that I already opened. Um, I know what this is. The reason it got opened was it showed up so late. I didn't have a clue what was going on. And it is... Oh well, I'll try to get them in focus a bit later. A CD 4026 Decade Counter uh, with 7 sec... 7... Yeah, 7 second... 7 segment displays. Next! It's all down at this end. We have alligator clips. We have also, what's in this one? This is an AliExpress one. Uh, yes, it has addresses on it. And this one has addresses on it. So, put it like that. And then the other Amazon one. Oops. Oh, there's stuff down there. And we have some tape and a loop clip. If I pronounced it right. Let's see if there's anything else in there. It's empty. So let's get the box within the box, or the box within the bag. Oh boy, this was a long time ago where I ordered this. Moon lamps. Okay, I'm just gonna lay these all out. Oop, yakking. I might just be editing that one. Let's start with the ICs. Oh, I actually got that in focus. Um, as I said, these are Decade Counters 7 segment display outputs. And they will be go used with this, which I bought in a recent uh, mailbag. There's another one in here. Nope. Ah, there it is. So uh, the outputs from these, then we'll go to these. It'll probably just be a simple counter. Oh, let's see. What's the next one? Get that over to the side. Uh, but, ah, let's go with this. That way I can find out what it is. Oh, right. I got a whole bunch of these uh, capacitive touch sensors, which will be used in a project. If I have time at the end of the video, I will set one of these up and go through its uses. Put that there. Go for this one with the fancy package. Oh, yes. <laughs> it clips on. If you're making something in steampunk, and I'll put the channel which I saw it on. Apparently he picked them up for his missus. Uh, when I saw that, I went, ooh, these are going to be perfect. At some point I'm going to try to do some steampunk uh, kind of quasi-art. Uh, with all the excess stuff I've been accumulating. I kind of figured it would be nice. I'll put in the corner here how much I paid for this and uh, where I got it. But it actually looks pretty good. Quality seems to be there. And magnify away. Next!
Boy, this is uh, probably the thickness, they said. Here, I'm just going to unroll this. This is a glow-in-the-dark tape. And what I want to do is, <laughs> once I get at it, currently on our cars, I've got uh, reflective tape. That way, should we break down, have no electricity, um, will be easy to spot on the road. Or off the road. Preferably on the road. So I'll try this out and put a short clip when it's darker um, to see how this well this works. But what I want to do, and let me just go grab it. is build them up in uh, width and I've got this uh, hummingbird decal that I can use as a blank or as a template and build it up and then stick it on the vehicle. How well it'll work? No idea. Oh, um, where I got it from is over there and the price is over there or vice versa. So, next. Some moon lamps. Now, let's just see how these come out. Okay, you got your little stand there. I got these because, A, I thought they looked cute, but they also said they were rechargeable. I'm not seeing that though. All I'm seeing is a battery in here. Let's just pull this open. Oh. Okay. That is not rechargeable. I think I'm going to have to pull up the ad and see if they actually are rechargeable. Okay, I just checked the ad. I'll put it up in the corner there. Apparently these are no longer available from them, mainly because they're probably falsely advertising. They, they do say USB rechargeable. And I figured for the price that they were charging, um, $8.69 for two of them, it would be a pretty good deal to get a rechargeable uh, unit. And of course... I'm not getting that. Oh well. Uh, let's just pull the ripcord on one of these. It says it's touchable. Dimmable. Uh, no, it's touchable, but that doesn't seem to do anything. It's basically got an on-off switch. Like that. Not dimmable. Their whole ad is wrong. And uh, when I looked it up on AliExpress... It's no longer available. So I guess they got too many complaints on this one. Now I'll just move these to the side. I can always try to put a USB uh, charger attached to this and see how that works out. Next, these 100 alligator clips. I'll stick in the corner what I paid for them. But I saw on another video, and I can't remember where, somebody had a really good uh, use for these. And it was to make, say you got your project, it's bigger than a breadboard, and you need to connect stuff up. So, take a couple of these. Let me just reach over, grab some wire. Oops, get inside the camera area. Take these like that. Put it through, solder it. Ditto on the other end. And then you can start clipping stuff together electrically. I thought that was actually a really good idea. So with a hundred of these, I should be able to make a very large pile of these. 
And actually, we'll do one just off camera for a moment. So I'll just solder one of these up. After applying a lot of heat and solder, it finally wetted this stuff. I kind of wonder if these are uh, aluminium. Okay, they're obviously made out of steel. But it did take a lot of effort to get that to finally wet it and get it stuck. So I'll do the other side. Be the flux. More flux on to here. Hook it up. And solder. And I'm using the good old stuff, lead-based. Probably need to be using a much uh, larger tip. Uh, hopefully that'll get enough heat in there. Then look at camera and go move over. Really soaking up the heat. Okay, it finally wet it to the side. Hold it in place. There we go. So once this thing's cooled a bit, let me pull it out. So the whole idea is that uh, I've got a wire that I might be clipping onto this side and maybe say a terminal to a large uh, capacitor or whatever on this side and I can actually build up the circuit on the table uh, easily and of course make a whole bunch of different lengths and different colors. So here's the setup. I've uh, Got roughly uh, well, 3.5 volts coming in on the VCC. Then there's ground. I've got an LED hooked up through a 330 ohm resistor. Both pads are open. So when you come close to it, but you don't have to touch it, it turns on. Move your finger away, it turns off. So that's the momentary. So I'll now uh, do the next one. So looking at the chart to the side, I've now got uh, B shorted across. So it should act where as soon as I get close, should lock on. Oops. And turn off. Lock on. Turn off. So that's the second operating uh, state. And I've got it set over here so that I can show you the chart there. And now the next. So now I've got it set so that uh, my pointer over here that is shorted. I've bridged it. And this one's also still bridged. So when you turn it on, uh, the LED is on so that's condition a and b are both shorted get close it switches and stays in that position and the last one to test will be where i remove this bridge oops i'm gonna have to grab some solder wick Make 
Make sure I clear that off. Looks clean to me. I'm just going to clean that up with a bit of alcohol. Uh, now that uh, I've got the B is no longer bridged, so it's A is bridged, B is not bridged, it should just be momentary again. Yeah, not too bad. Let's see if I can zoom in to... Oops, move over. Ah, there you can see that it's uh, no longer bridged on the B. Uh, so you can just use these for uh, touch pads. I'm going to want to play with it a tiny bit and uh, see the range that you can get, uh, how much material you can put between it, and it still works. But kind of cute, and dirt cheap when you consider uh, 50 of them cost less than $4. So, that's it for this, and there's just the glow-in-the-dark uh, tape now. So, with the tape just sitting on the bench, uh, it's uh, taking enough light that when I turn off all the lights, uh, this is actually glowing uh, pretty good, a lot better than I thought it was going to. I'm not sure which chemicals this one has. So here's a bit of bonus one. Here's with uh, a UVA light, and you can see it actually is quite bright. Oops, I'm kind of fumbling around because A, I'm working in the dark, and B, I've got uh, goggles on. So here's the red one. And it really doesn't do anything to it. Now, let's pull out. This is supposed to be, well, this is purple. And it appears green uh, when it hits this material. And it really brightens it up quite a bit. And yeah, as I said, I got my goggles on for this one because this laser pointer is way over the specifications that it's supposed to be. So hopefully nobody's driving behind you with um, a purple laser. <laughs> so that was just something else I decided to try out. Okay, now I'm done.